Catherine Connolly. Could be a market. Hi, here, Lee. I guess, um, Tarnished, I'm asking for an update on the status of the Tribunal of Inquiry to examine the effectiveness of com the complaints process in the Defence Forces. And I ask for a very specific update on this, given the background. 1990, the Gleeson report, that's 34 years ago, they told us that the, the outline, the inadequacies in the grievance procedures, the victimisation of people who apply for redress, and the urgent need, urgent need, back in 1990. So if I could have an update, yeah, thanks. I'm, I, I'm Minister of Defence for over a year, um, and uh, I'm very determined to establish this on foot of the Independent Review Group. And the Government, we recently approved the terms of reference for a tribun Tribunal of Inquiry, pursuant to the provisions of the Tribunal of Inquiry Act 1921. The Tribunal will examine the effectiveness of the complaints processes in the Defence Forces concerning workplace issues relating to discrimination, bullying, harassment, sexual harassment, sexual misconduct, and the use of hazardous chemicals within Air Corps headquarters at Casement Aerodrome Baldonnell. The Government also approved the appointment of Justice Anne Port to chair the Tribunal. The motions to establish the Tribunal of Inquiry were subsequently approved by both Dáil and Shannon Aird. A premises in Smithfield in Dublin has been provided by the Office of Public Works for the purposes of the Tribunal. The Chair is currently making arrangements to allow the Tribunal to commence its work as soon as possible. Once all logistical and administrative arrangements have been put in place, I will be signing a statutory instrument to give effect to the Tribunal, which would thereby allow it to commence its work as soon as possible. <clears throat> thank you, Tarnished, and thank you for the update. So, ha ha have all the members been appointed necessary, all the administrative staff, the backup? The work hasn't begun yet at that tribunal, I gather from your answer. You'll, in due course, you'll be signing a statutory instrument. So, when will it actually start its work? I know that you've confirmed verbally that if people haven't made complaints formally, they still will be included. That's not set out in the terms of reference. Can you clarify that again for the record? I know, but it's not in the terms of reference, so it's important. Trust is of the essence here, isn't it? And we're going back to 1990. I have a list, of, uh, including Tom Clonan's report in 2000 and 2000 and to the Independent Monitoring Group, 2016, or a search paper, the 11th of, 7, the 11th of September 21, the Women of Honour, and so on. And then the terms of reference were negotiated, and they weren't involved, the Women of Honour. On whose shoulders the whole burden re rested after the failure over the years. So trust is of the essence. Well, I made that very clear in the dial on numerous occasions, the terms of reference do cover um, anybody who did not make a formal complaint uh, to the complaints processes coming before the tribunal um, uh, and, 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 and get, their, get the issues addressed in terms of why they wouldn't have, for example, so that many people feel they were deterred by the complaints processes as they existed and so forth. Um, and, and I think within a short, within a week or two, certainly within a fortnight, I would be in a position hopefully to sign the statutory instruments. There has been some discussions to get all the legal rates and everything sorted out. Um, and, and the judge is in position. The judge will um, obviously appoint a backup team and so on like that. Um, so we're giving a three-year time frame um, from the time of establishment to completion of this tribunal. Um, and uh, so shortly within the next number of weeks, uh, I would expect it to get off the ground. Thank you, Tarnisha. I know that you've confirmed, but it wasn't in the terms of reference. That's why we keep. I know that's why we keep asking. It's extremely important. It was. It, no, 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 no. It was. I did look at the terms of reference, and myself and other colleagues have raised this, and you have verbally confirmed it. So that's good. But it is, it is important. I'm looking at a whole list, like I've just said, and we've said it so often, I don't want to repeat it, but it is important. The Independent Review Group told us that women weren't safe, neither men or women were safe. I mean, this was a staggering, staggering uh, a set out when they set it out and so on. I don't want to repeat it in the short time I have. But we've come to this point because the complaints procedure has utterly failed. And then we have ambiguity around whether those who didn't make a formal complaint are covered or not. I appreciate it your bona fides and you're telling me the will. But you might appreciate where I'm coming from on behalf of the people who have serious doubts about the process and had from day one. Again, there is no, there is no, and there should be no ambiguity in respect to that issue. And I made that abundantly clear in the House at the time that it was going through the House. Um, and the issues are very serious that have been covered by the Tribunal. But we've already acted in respect of many of the recommendations of the, of the Independent Review Group, which I believe its conclusions were quite shocking. 
Um, so, for example, any incident of a sexual assault uh, or abuse is now immediately referred to on Garda Shikana. Uh, and we took that decision very, very quickly in the aftermath of the Independent Review Group um, report and a range of other decisions uh, in addition to that, apart altogether from the establishment of the, of, of, of the tribunal um, it, itself.